This is a talk about intelligence and how some cutting edge research in neuroscience can help us understand it better. First, let me ask you a question. Hands up if you've ever heard the phrase that we only use 10% of our brain. Okay, quite a lot of you, let's talk about that. Well, there are billions of cells in the brain, and like jelly beans, they come in many different flavors. The first flavor I'm gonna tell you about is called a neuron. Neurons send electrical signals through the brain, and when that signal reaches the end of the cell, a chemical messenger is released, and that chemical messenger triggers the signal in the next neuron. Neurons are kind of like wires with chemical junctions in between them, and these amazing cells make up about 10% of your brain. The other 90% of your brain is made up collectively of glial cells, and I'm going to tell you about the most common flavor of glial cell known as the astrocyte. Astrocytes are these tiny star-shaped cells which have hundreds of processes which reach out in all these different directions. You see, astrocytes, they can't send electrical signals like the neurons, but they listen at the chemical junctions. And a single astrocyte can listen to over 10,000 neurons. I think astrocytes are responsible for our intelligence. Let me give you some evidence for this theory. If you look at a snail, the ratio of neurons to astrocytes is one to one, neurons to astrocytes. And in a mouse, the ratio is one to five, neurons to astrocytes. And in a human being, the ratio is one to nine, neurons to astrocytes. So this suggests that as we increase in complexity from snail to man, we see an increase in the ratio of astrocytes. This year, somebody took human astrocytes and implanted them into a mouse's brain. And the mouse became more intelligent. It performed better on all the cognitive tasks. But most interestingly, I think, when scientists examined Einstein's brain in the 1980s, they looked at the regions of the brain dedicated to mathematics and they found an abnormally high number of astrocytes. So there's some evidence that there is a link between astrocytes and intelligence. But my research is about trying to find out what the astrocytes are actually doing. You see, I told you that astrocytes listen to the neurons, but astrocytes can also affect the neurons. Some scientists think the neurons are just the wires and it's the astrocytes that are in charge. My research is about trying to prove what the that the astrocytes are making the neurons go faster or go slower. You see, something else that happens in the brain is when the neurons are sending their electrical signals, they start to set fire electrical signals at the same time, and they fire in synchrony, like a big orchestra all playing at the same time. We think this synchronous firing is crucial for consciousness and thoughts of processes. <laughs> Um, which suggests, <laughs> um, oh God, Very quickly. <laughs> it's just thrown me. Um, the, um, so I think the astrocytes are like the conductors of the orchestra, um, telling the neurons when to fire. Okay. <laughs> Don't go firing in neurons, Isabel. Time does dilate up here on the stage. That Judges. That was captivating, so don't worry that you won out, ran out a bit of time. I think we were all captivated by listening to what you were telling us about astrocytes. And so I'm really fascinated. You were saying more astrocytes equals more intelligence. But what is intelligence? <laughs> tough question, tough question. Um, I think the way I'm thinking about intelligence in this sense is really how do we have a thought process from A to B and how can we do re have reasoning and logic and, and, and really thinking more also along the lines of consciousness. But we know that animals have you know, memories and motivations as well. So I think we can look at intelligence in a range of different species. But there does seem to be this... I think, I, I think uh, you know... Uh, a human and a mouse has more intelligence than a snail and more motivation and memories and strategies, perhaps, of things they want to achieve. So, so how, more would your, how would your mouse more intelligent? Oh, the mouse was tested on a range of different cognitive tasks, so looking at memory tests and so spatial memory and navigation and things like that. But not um, on emotional intelligence? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I love jelly beans. 
<laughs> that wasn't my question. Um, Test Jim for his intelligence. <laughs> yes. What I know about astrocytes and glial cells, I mostly learned from Professor Lithgow here when he and I <laughs> oh, made, yes. ma made a Channel 4 series yeah, we co-presented 10 years ago about, right. indeed, about Einstein's brain. Yeah. Um, and, and so... And clearly, we held Einstein's brain. We held brain. Einstein's brain. I know, it's fantastic. Yeah, we we, can we talk about that? Sorry, instead? anyway. Um, <laughs> the Jim and Mark show. Is, 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 <laughs> but so, so, I mean, the idea of intelligence, yeah. I mean, I can understand if, the, if there were more astrocytes in parietal lobe, you know, for cognitive ability. But presumably, if there were more in the hippocampus, does that mean they, they will help you, you know, have a better memory? I mean, do, do they help every part of the brain work better? So I think what, what I was trying to convey is that neuroscience is a bit neuron-centric and that astrocytes are these kind of neglected cells. So there was a very famous study where they showed that taxi drivers had an increase in the size of the hippocampus. But throughout life, your neurons are not replicating. We're not getting any new neurons. And your astrocytes and your glial cells are replicating. So, for example, in that taxi driver study, it could be that the reason we're seeing an increase in the size of the hippocampus is actually because there's an increase in the number of astrocytes, not neurons. Um, I think we don't, we don't fully understand the role of astrocytes at the synapse, but we know that they can make the neurons fire faster and, we can, and do many different things. So it's just about trying to understand that subcellular relationship, and then we might be able to take it further to the grand theories about how the mind works. Thank you. One more? If you've got one more. Um, well, I, okay. I mean, you, you, it's, it's, it, neuroscience is, you know, one of the sexy areas of, of science in the 21st century. Is it something that you want to pursue entirely as research, or do you see, you know, sort of public engagement and, and, and trying to explain this idea? It's, it's a good subject, yeah. good material to, to use in science communication. I definitely want to continue with my research. My PhD has been going really well, and I'm loving, I research astrocytes, and I think they're the future um, of, of, they're a big future in, in astrocytes in the field of neuroscience. So I definitely want to keep doing research full time. I like the idea of doing public engagement alongside that and doing things like this to, it's just really good fun, to be honest. Um, going, visiting Cheltenham Science Festival and getting involved in all that stuff that's going on. Um, so I, I, I want to do both, but mainly I want to stick with my research. Finally, just a point of Thank clarification. You. If you can yes. hold up your left arm again, can we just make it clear whether this, no, this way, that, that's not a really rubbish tattoo, is it? I mean, these, these, these are there for illustrative purposes, in case you're at the back. Okay, one more time, please, for Isabel Christie. Thank you.